In this screencast, I will discuss measuring the volume of liquids. One of the first things you need to do is choose the appropriate container. If I'm in a science laboratory, I may use a flask. For a smaller amount of liquid, I may use a graduated cylinder, or possibly a beaker. If I'm in the kitchen, I'll likely use a measuring cup. Next, be sure to set your container on a smooth, flat surface. If the container is on an angle, it will be very difficult to accurately read the amount of liquid in the container. Next, bend down to eye level. It's very difficult to read the container if you're looking from a high angle or a low angle, so be sure your eye is at the level of the liquid in the container. Next, choose the appropriate scale. Are you measuring in metric? or in standard measurements. If I'm making pancakes, I know the recipe calls for a cup of milk. Some containers, such as this beaker, have two scales. One going from zero, counting up. The other, zero is at the top of the container, counting down. One scale is useful for pouring out. The other scale is useful for telling how much liquid is left in the container. Next, look carefully at the liquid in the container. You'll notice that water and many other chemicals tend to cling to the side of the container. The property of surface tension causes the water to cling to the side of the container. It's important to measure from the bottom of the curve. This curve, indicated by the arrow, is called the meniscus. In the example here on the left, you should carefully read this as 66 milliliters of liquid. So in summary, set the container down on a smooth surface, bend down to eye level, be sure you're choosing the correct scale, and read to the bottom of the meniscus of the liquid. Then you'll have an accurate measurement of the liquid in your container.